Good morning. I am Deepak Fatak, teacher at IIT Bombay. I am also the principal investigator of the T10KT program under which this workshop is being held. What I'll do is I will discuss the workshop timetable first, and we'll wait for the inaugural address by Professor Kannan. So I hope. You are able to see the workshop schedule on your screens. Uh, the same has been posted on Moodle. I am sure at least some of you would have seen it, although it was posted very late. But let me go through the program very quickly with you. You will notice that the overall stress of this workshop is not so much on discussion of computer programming as it is on the discussion on how to teach computer programming. You will recall that very early in the lab, in the workshop brochure itself, I had clarified that this course is not in, about learning computer programming. It is for teachers who teach computer programming, and therefore it is expected that they know computer programming rather well what we are going to discuss is how we believe this subject ought to be taught. Although we will be sharing our experiences in teaching the equivalent CS101 course here, in the process we would like to learn from your experiences as well, which would be filtered through your workshop coordinators, and we will have time for you people to make brief presentations, as you will see later. The first lecture after the inaugural brief inaugural function is on how to teach introductory programming courses. You all will understand that the programming course is taught mostly at the first year, even first year, first semester level, to all new entrants, at least of engineering colleges, and also in most courses such as MSc Computer Science, or MCA, what it means is that students who are not expected to know anything about computers come in and take this course. More importantly, when the course is taught at the first year BTEC level, the students who take this course are often students who have never attended college in their life. They have just passed their schools, probably with good academic performance, that is why they get into science or engineering colleges, but still they are fresh students as far as the college is concerned. So how do you engage with such students and how should a first course in programming be taught in general is the matter of discussion. This talk will be delivered by my colleague Professor Abhiram Ranade. This is a rather long talk and I will be moderating that talk. So this talk will continue after the tea break. It may not continue right up to 12 o'clock or 11.55, as the timetable says. We may finish it a bit earlier, in which case I will start my own session, which comes next to it. And that is about use of technology in the teaching learning processes. As a part of this session, I will also talk briefly about the computing environment that we'll be using for this workshop, namely the code blocks computing environment, along with, of course, a special graphical package which has been implemented at IIT Bombay, but which is available at all the remote centers called Simple CPP. Professor Ranade will speak more about why is such a package needed and how exactly it could be used in a first course. In the afternoon, we have lab sessions. These lab sessions are there on each of the afternoons, except that the objectives of the lab sessions are significantly different on different days. On the first day today, you'll actually familiarize yourself with the code blocks environment, run some 
simple CPP programs, run some other C programs of your choice. The actual assignment will be uploaded on the Moodle before you reach the lab. The point is, you should be familiar with the environment with which we actually expect you to go back and teach the computer programming course to your students. The entire second day is devoted to what we call pedagogical issues. Pedagogy is about the methodology used to teach any course, not just computer programming course. But in this particular workshop, my colleague, Professor Sridhar Ayer, will be discussing with you the pedagogy or the elements of pedagogy which are most relevant for teaching computer programming. He will also take examples from the computer programming uh, subject. The four topics which are specifically going to be covered by Professor Sridhar Ayer are the notion of active learning, which actually started quite some time ago, but has gained ground recently in the light of heavy use of technology in our teaching learning processes, which make this active learning actually feasible. He will then talk about the think-pair-share technique. He will talk about the peer instruction mechanism. For example, how clickers could be used in order to enhance the learning experience. And in the last session, he will discuss the flipped classroom. You will remember that in the online portion of this workshop, all of you have actually gone through some early exposure to the notion of flipped classroom through a paper which was uploaded. And there was indeed a survey uh, assignment which you would have completed, or at least most of you have completed. The last three days, 18th, 19th, and 20th, is when we concentrate on discussing specific topics pertaining to teaching of computer programming. You will notice again that there are many topics out of which only few are explicitly discussed. For example, the first and foremost, how to introduce programming. I'll discuss a slightly novel and different way in the light of whatever Professor Abhiram Ranade will be talking about. Subsequently, we'll discuss only three or four important things, namely how to teach iterative solutions, how to handle arrays, how to deal with strings, and introducing files. These are the kind of topics which are considered slightly more advanced or difficult. And therefore, I have chosen to uh, put some emphasis on these topics. But you will notice that all other sessions dwell around how to design assignments, how to design quizzes, how to design questions, both for use in online examinations as well as use for use in conventional examination. As mentioned in the workshop brochure, all of you will be grouped into smaller teams of three to five people. And each team will have to complete an assignment to be submitted after the workshop is over at your own place. You are expected to spend about two weeks on it. That is at least two full days of uh, working time. Uh, in the light of other developments, which I'll mention later, we will keep the date of actual submission extended to about four weeks from the end of this workshop. But the actual assignment allocation has to happen within this workshop. The preliminary discussion amongst the teams on what exactly they will do and how they will do it will have to happen here. These decisions will be taken by the teams and the team coordinator will upload both the final assignment to be done as well as a very small five to seven minute presentation on what exactly they wish to do and how exactly they propose to go about it including how they will coordinate with each other when they are not available in a group in a face-to-face -face environment, but are at their respective places. Not only that, after these presentations are loaded, the certain teams will be randomly selected, and they will have to make presentations on Friday uh, on whatever they propose to do as uh, their team assignments. On the last day, I will briefly talk about introduction to object-oriented programming. And then effectively, we'll conclude the workshop 
by a session on collecting feedback from the participants and having a brief validity function. All participants are required to submit an online feedback. This online feedback session will be held after the validity function. This is because there have been some requests that some participants might want to go back to their places on Saturday afternoon. Such people should complete their online submission of uh, workshop feedback. Uh, ahead of the noon, we'll keep it open right from the morning. This then is the general structure of the workshop. At this juncture, I'm happy to invite my colleague, Professor Kannan Maudgalya. Let me very briefly introduce him to you. Professor Kannan Maudgalya is an engineer from IIT Madras. He's actually a chemical engineer. I mention this because he rarely does anything related to chemical engineering these days. He then did his master's and PhD at Rice University specializing in controls and actually becoming more of an electrical engineer. After coming back here, he has been spearheading the activities in this area. Several years ago, he got intrinsically interested in the great ideas of the national mission and committed himself to contribute significantly to the activities. He has been a member of standing committee of the mission right from its inception. More importantly, he is the overall coordinator of a number of mission projects that are being executed at IIT Bombay, including the T10KT project which I had. He himself has developed a pedagogical novelty called spoken tutorials. I will request him to briefly mention it, at least although we are going to discuss it later in the course of this workshop. In general, his contribution to greater use of technology in education has been immense and we all benefit from that contribution. I'll request uh, Professor Kannan to share his thoughts with you. All yours, please. Good morning. Yeah, thank you, Professor Patak. It's a privilege and an honor to uh, inaugurate this important uh, course, the contact mode of the two-week course, training close to 10,000 faculty members in the country. The National Mission on Education through ICT was uh, initiated by uh, Mr. Sinha, IAS, who had a grand vision to make technology available for everybody to provide the latest infrastructure and the technologies available to every child in the country. It is being pursued now by Mr. the current director of NMEICT, Mr. Praveen Prakash, IAS. NMEICT has three mandates. One is connectivity to provide one GBPS bandwidth to every one of, let's say, 600 universities in the country and 10 Mbps connection to every one of about 25,000 plus colleges in the country. This work has been more or less completed now. The next one is uh, content generation. This uh, particular course, this uh, T10KT is actually funded by this part of the mission. In fact, several other projects at IIT Bombay have also been supported by this part. The third one is uh, device, the Akash project. I will talk about it a little bit later. When launched, this was a $1 billion mission, probably the largest and most ambitious anywhere in the world. Let me briefly talk about some of the activities at IIT Bombay under the mission. The e Yantra project is managed by Professor Kavi Arya. He plans to promote robotics and through that promote hands-on kind of experience throughout the country. He is in the process of setting up labs in various parts of the country. Professor Kavi Arya is a professor in computer science. 
used to be a faculty member of the erstwhile Crescent Kanwal Reiki School of Information Technology, which is now merged into the computer science department. The next project that I would want to talk about is Oscar, the project that tries to create uh, animations. Professor Sridhar Iyer of computer science, who is going to give you a talk later on, will um, is the person who coordinated this uh, project, Oscar. The first phase of this project is over, and uh, we are hoping that the that he or one of his uh, colleagues will take up the second phase soon. That is extremely important because animation is a very good way to uh, very good um, component of pedagogy, rather very good pedagogical method to teach uh, even complicated methods. We have a project called Virtual Labs. It is a national project coordinated by Professor Ranjan Bose of IIT Delhi. At IIT Bombay, it is coordinated by Professor Santosh Narona of Chemical Engineering. Uh, by the way, I am a professor in Chemical Engineering, Education Technology and Systems and Control. There are uh, many interdisciplinary uh, research efforts at IIT Bombay. So, I am pleased to be a part of uh, both Education Technology and Systems and Control. We also have a project called eKalpa, NME ICT funded project. It's, uh, its goal is to create design courses. It is being coordinated by Professor Ravi Puvaya of Industrial Design Center. It is being done jointly with uh, NID Ahmedabad and IIT Gohati. Um, another project that is being done at IIT Bombay through NMEICT is uh, spoken tutorial. Uh, Professor Fatek said that we may get an opportunity to talk about it a little later. Perhaps you are already going to use it. Using this, it is possible to provide IT training through a self-learning methodology. This workshop, these are called self-workshops. These workshops can be conducted by students, volunteers, and anybody who is interested in promoting IT, anybody who is interested in uh, the education of our children. It can be rolled out at all the places simultaneously. For example, we have excellent spoken tutorials for C, C++, Java, and so on. Those of you who want to pick up some C and C++ quickly, before this course starts, you may want to go through our website, Spoken Tutorial. All that you have to do is to enter Spoken Tutorial in uh, Google and that will take you, the first hit is ours. T10KT, our Train 10,000 Teachers uh, program, is the one that you are, that is making available this course to you. Professor Fatak is has been coordinating this. He started with um, a 10,000 teacher training program. And the program was so good that the government asked him to go to uh, 10,000 teacher mode. Now, this program also has been extremely good so that he has been asked to go to MOOCs, which will be a, in a position to reach out to 1 lakh, if not more people simultaneously. As far as our country is concerned, unlike the West, for the West, MOOCs and such massive training programs or an icing on the cake, whereas for India, it is bread and butter. It is important for us in the West, when a MOOCs is offered, it is okay if the completion rate is very small, 5%, 10%, it is okay, because it is an icing on cake anyway, whereas for us, it is something lot more important. It has to fill the gap that we have. In other words, it is, that is why I call it bread and butter kind of a thing, we cannot be complacent with 5 percent or 10 percent completion rate. In fact, that is applicable to this um, 10,000 teacher training program as well. It is extremely important for us to put it to proper use, to realize the full benefits of it and make sure the benefits eventually go to the students. In that sense, this is an extremely important program for us. We have to take it lot more seriously and uh, considering the potential of this, the government is very keen to promote this effort and uh, in fact, it is banking on faculty members like you 
to reach out to the students. And so this is going to be one of the flagship programs of the mission itself. Finally, my uh, uh, brief speech would not be complete if I don't talk about Akash. You know that IIT Bombay uh, was interested with the responsibility of taking up the Akash project. When Akash project came to IIT Bombay, we had three mandates. One, to find out whether the idea of Akash was sustainable. Did Akash make sense? That was the first one. IIT Bombay proved beyond doubt that it was indeed a great project. It was indeed a great device. The second mandate given to IIT Bombay was to, to distribute it and to create content collaboratively. We have done that as well. Uh, we have distributed close to 70,000 of the 1 lakh tablets that we received and uh, students from all over the country through 300 Akash remote centers are developing applications on that. In fact, one of the projects that will come out of this is the project to port NCRT books onto Akash. It is being done by the Sastra University, one of our Akash remote centers and that project is close to completion. In a similar way, there are other projects that are happening. Our, just to give another example, our collaborator at Wales University has come up with a solar battery and in fact we are looking at it seriously. There are many such projects because of lack of time, I will not go into more of them. While talking about Android, we ported Clicker software, Scilab, animations, Akash business tool and accounting software and of course spoken tutorials. There are many more. I don't have time to talk about every one of them. More interestingly, we have got Linux running on Akash. Some of our uh, staff members, by the way, most of this work has been done by our staff members, most of whom have degrees from outside the IIT system. So I would like to point out that every one of you and every one of your students is in a position to contribute. In fact, also has the capability to contribute to this project. Regarding the Linux software, we got Ubuntu 13.10 ported. You all know that Akash is a very low footprint machine. In fact, it has only half a GB RAM. So one might ask, what is possible? Uh, we have got Linux running in just 100 MB. A knockdown version of Ubuntu can be made to work in 100 MB. Just to give some uh, comparison, the time it takes to open labor office spreadsheet called Calc, which is very similar to uh, Microsoft Excel, is much less than the time it takes for MS uh, Excel to open in a big desktop. In other words, the labor office version of the spreadsheet opens a lot faster on Akash, which is a very small device. This 2,263 rupee device, it opens a lot faster there compared to Microsoft Excel on a desktop costing several tens of thousands of rupees with lots of RAM, um, high speed processors and so on. We have most of the things that work on Linux working on this. For example, we have got our electronic design automation tool, OSCAD using which one can design circuits, make PCBs and so on, all of that can be made in Akash. We can use Akash as a scope and uh, to interface with uh, hardware devices and show the use it as an, uh, to replace an expensive oscilloscope. We can use Akash for data acquisition and control. We have proven beyond doubt that Akash is a successful project. Now we are about to embark, in fact, the government has now gone ahead and is making plans to procure Akash through DGSND so that Akash can be made available to everybody. So even a person who wants a single Akash unit can actually go and buy that. That was not possible in the previous Akash project. In fact, we were not able to give Akash units to individuals because that was not 
part of our project but now that we have succeeded it will be available soon through DGSNT. At IIT Bombay we are taking up uh, another pilot which is a logical continuation of the Akash project which is to come up with a netbook version of Akash tablets. It will be a complete netbook with a complete keyboard and it can be used as a full computer, 10 inch screen with a trackpad and so on and uh, it will run Linux and in my opinion it will run blazingly fast. It is going to be a lot faster than a Pentium and our aim is to bring this device uh, at about rupees 5000 or so. We are just starting the project, we will keep you posted on that and um, we would whenever the situation, whenever we reach the point, uh, I would uh, invite the entire community, computer science, IT community and electronics community and of course the entire user community to participate in this ambitious project. So with this uh, I would like to, uh, I think I have given a brief overview of NME ICT and some of the projects happening at IIT Bombay. It has been a great opportunity for me to address you all. I hope that in this, uh, in this uh, course that has been passionately put together by Professor Fatek, there are many useful things. It is not going to be boring, they are not going to teach how to write loops and so on but you are going to be taught, you are going to be um, rather uh, they are going to share with you some of the pedagogical methods, tools and things that will make your course effective. You already know computer science, only people who have been teaching this course have been invited to participate in this course. In that sense you are already domain experts, but the pedagogy is something that is going to be something new that hopefully you can take from here. We of course invite you to share useful pedagogical methods that you might have developed and Moodle is a great platform for sharing your thoughts. So I want to uh, wish you all the best, uh, enjoy the course. Thank you and Jai Hind. Thank you Professor Kannan. Uh, I have two of my colleagues here who have been known as great teachers and have been contributing generally to our efforts of improving the quality and effectiveness of teaching. One of them I am going to call here to share his thoughts with you. The other is Professor Viren Sethi. Professor Viren Sethi has been the coordinator of our institute-wide course on effective communication. Actually, it's very interesting and I do not know whether all of you are aware of it, but effective communication is a compulsory program for all our postgraduate students. Uh, this was introduced as a compulsory course. It's a pass, not pass course, but it's a compulsory course still. We introduced it after we realized that many of our students, bright as they are, well prepared as they are in their own subjects, they are sadly very deficient in the art of effective communication without which the professional life could become very miserable and deficient. It is in this context that the Institute Senate decided to include a course. The course runs in an interesting format. There are common lectures for all 1000 students, 1000 postgraduate students. It is also compulsory for our PhD students I think. And then the individual departments assign a faculty member as the departmental coordinator to give department specific assignments and engage the department students with various submissions and in their own way whatever is relevant for their own department. The point I am trying to make is that right from the inception, Professor Viren Sethi has been one of the coordinators of the institute level course. Can we focus on him please once again? I am proud to say that I was his sort of TA when I was the departmental coordinator for the computer science department and the passion with which he elaborates the fundamental principles of effective combination is absolutely extraordinary. Someday I hope I will have an opportunity to arrange a T10KT workshop for teachers because I realize that effective communication 
is actually far more important to teachers than just the students whom we teach. And therefore, thank you, Professor Sethi, for being here. And thank you for helping us out. The other person who I'm actually inviting here is Professor Uday Gaitonde. He is not from the CS background. He is a professor of mechanical engineering. He has been a participant in these T10KT workshops when we used to conduct workshops only for 1,000 people. In the course on thermodynamics he offered, I still remember people after people in the feedback session calling him the god of thermodynamics. For me, he is more important than just being the god of thermodynamics because he has gone ahead and convinced several of his colleagues to participate and contribute to these T10KT workshops. As a result, mechanical engineering department actually is the department which has offered the largest number of courses in the T10KT workshop series. More importantly, when IIT Bombay decided to join the global massive open online course movement by becoming a member of EDX consortium, we were required to offer few of our courses globally. We decided to offer two courses to begin with. One is going to be my own course, CS101X, the one which we are discussing here. The second is a course on thermodynamics, which is going to be taught by Professor Gaitun. Since offering a course delivered through MOOCs is probably the ultimate in scaling using technology effectively, and that is what we are going to discuss for a long time in this workshop as well. I have taken the liberty to request Professor Gaitonde to share his thoughts briefly on what he feels about the MOOCs offering, the challenges thereof. Professor Gaitonde. Thank you, Professor Fatak. Uh, one thing which he did not tell you is that I have been a guinea pig for his experiments in education technology. A very willing one though. It has been a pleasant interaction teaching the first thermodynamics course in the thousand teacher mode, then again the second thermodynamics course in the 10,000 teacher mode. And of course when the IIT Bombay joined the EDX consortium, we created the IIT Bombay X. I was also one of the willing uh, person to start off with the thermodynamics course. So ME20X will be offered along with CS101X uh, beginning end of July, I think 29 July is the. In spite of having taught thermodynamics under different uh, guises to undergraduate, postgraduate and network students through the T10KT program. The MOOC, the massive online course is uh, a different thing altogether. It is online but in a way it is also offline in the sense we will be uploading by a given schedule daily or weekly snippets, so called lecture modules but these are not you know 45 minute or one hour lecture modules, these are snippets many of them even shorter than the typical spoken tutorial of 8 to 10 minutes. Because the feedback is that if you provide a video interaction of about 4 to 5 minutes, the person who watches it, let us call him the student, okay, the student of a MOOC tends to go through the whole of it. If you go to 10 minutes, then you know people tend to lose interest after 6 minutes. And if you give them a video recording of something like 45 minutes or 1 hour, they tend to lose instead interest just after 2 or 3 minutes. So one of the major efforts on my part is to convert the lectures on thermodynamics or the teaching of thermodynamics into snippets typically of 3 to 5 minutes duration. And that is the effort that I am putting in now and hopefully I will be ready with that by the end of July. And then we have problems of continuity because in one hour you do not have to worry about uh, continuity of the first 5 minutes and the next 5 minutes and next 5 minutes because the whole thing is a smooth uh, lecture and you have given it so many times so it is you just go there and deliver it you do not really have to prepare after implementing it so many times. But when it comes to MOOCs I have to go back to basics, go to my notes, snip out 
things and then keep a continuity from one snippet to next. I also have to provide for interaction after every snippet or every other snippet because otherwise a collection of 10 snippets becomes a lecture of uh, about 15 minutes duration and all the advantages of providing snippets is lost. So we are including graphics and we are including self evaluation and interaction in that. It's a very interesting thing to do, although a heavy load. And I hope with the team here and Professor Fatak's backup, that should be ready in about a month's time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Gayatonde. Before concluding this inaugural session, I'm glad to welcome a large number of young people who are not yet teachers, but hopefully they soon shall be. They're all MTech students of educational technology at one of our partner institutions, Amruta University. So welcome all of you. I hope you'll enjoy this workshop.